and welcome to uh, part two of our annual QPR player ratings. In this part, we'll be rating the remaining 12 players alphabetically and also rating the two managers. So that should be interesting. I'm again joined by Dave and George, and I'll just clarify for anybody who missed part one. The key thing is we started on a five out of 10 for each player and worked up or down from there. And there's no half marks. As I said, we'll be going alphabetically through the remaining players and we start part two with Sam Field. Dave, you're up first this time. Yeah, I've gone I've gone high with this one. I've gone eight with Field. I think he's had a good season. Um I thought, you know, last year he was player of the year and you know it was he, he didn't start the best this year, I don't think, but he's got better as it's gone along. Um he's really improved under Sifuentes. He's added goals to his game. He looks a threat going forward. He probably should have scored three or four more goals this season. He's missed some good chances just for Christmas. But, um, yeah, I think he's had a, had a really good season overall. You know, he's become a mainstay in the team with real competition with Colback and Hayden there. He's, he's kind of the first name in the midfield that you'd go with for most games. And I think he's done really well. Yeah, I went with an eight as well, mainly because even though he struggled, as you said, as the whole squad did in the first half of the season, he still always stood up to be counted, never goes missing. He's always fit, isn't he, and available. And I, I, a couple of weeks ago, I might have actually given him a seven, but then we realised he's got four goals in the last 10, 11 games of the season, mm. which is fantastic. So I went with an eight as well. What about you, George? That's a trio of eights, actually. I've gone eight as well. I think... Um... He could have been a nine in my books, but I think at, at one point he um he didn't seem as committed for some reason. He seemed like it took it took him a couple of games to adjust to the Sifuentes style, as it did for quite a few players. Obviously, such a big comparison between him and Ainsworth. But um no, I think um an eight is around around where he should be. And I think he's definitely one of, if not the best players in our team. Um yeah, he hasn't really been injured when he's been at us. When he was at West Brom, we had a poor injury record. So I think his consistency helps us a lot. So I think um, I think eight's fair. Yeah, definitely. And we shouldn't forget as well, he signed a new contract this season. So that's good news for the future. Morgan Fox is up next and you're first, George. I've gone for a six on this one because I think that... Um, he started. He got thrown into the team against Watford, which I think was a bit harsh. He didn't really have much of a preseason. I don't think he had anything at Stoke, and um, no, he got thrown into the Watford game, which I think was harsh. But he looks like he's a decent, good cover defender. He did. He did all right against Coventry. I think that's the worth for him. He's all right. He's a, he's solid at Championship level. So I think, um, yeah, he had that. He picked up. That injury at Coventry at home, I think it was in the first 20 seconds of the game. I don't think that helped him much, but I think, um, yeah, he's good cover. Dave? Yeah, I've gone six as well. I think he's done all right. Um, he was one of the few that was playing well under Rainsworth before his injury. Um, he's one of them that he doesn't let you down when he's come in. He's, he's done all right. He's been like a six, seven out of ten most games he's played. He's he's done pretty well. Um Sifuentes so seems to like him. He's, he has played him a little bit in the run-in, which, you know, you thought he might stick with the same back four, but he, he brought him in at Plymouth, I think, and in a few other games. And, you know, he, he's done OK, you know. He had good experience to the defence, so yeah, I've gone with a six. Yeah, I went with a six as well. And I think the thing is, the word you just said, he's OK, isn't he? He's, he's never probably mm. going to be an outstanding player, but he comes in, does a job. His experience is probably valuable. And you can imagine him playing probably a similar role next season. He'll come in for the odd game here and there. But I wouldn't imagine he'll be a, a key player. But um, he was he was okay when he when he played. I'd give him a six as well. Michael Frey next. I've given him a four. I mean, his equaliser against Norwich was important, but he just didn't look ready for Championship football, did he? Which probably wasn't his fault. We know he hadn't played for a long time before he joined us, but it really showed. Um, and we have to hope he has a good preseason and can maybe be a different player next year because. He needs to get fit, and we need to hope we've got a bit of a better player there. Maybe harsh, but I went with a four. Dave? Yeah, I've gone the same. I've gone four as well. You know, when he come in, you know, you thought he'll come in and get a couple of goals and, you know, add a little bit to our attack. But, you know, he was even worse than what come before him, to be honest. You know, I keep thinking back to that penalty against West Brom. We played so well that night, and we was right behind the goal. I was like, oh, he's going to smash this in, and it was such a poor penalty that he, he delivered, and hasn't really looked the same since that game, to be honest. He's you know he's been injured a little bit towards the end, but you know I don't know if they've offered him like a, I think he's probably here next year. Hopefully, after a pre-season, he's better next season. But yeah, not a great start. 
yeah, it's a vital preseason for him, I think, to kick on. What did you give him, George? I went a bit higher than you guys. I went for a five. I think that um, in a couple of games he did well. We chased after every sort of uh, every ball. He looked energetic, even though he can't run. He looked like it. He, he looked all right, and um, scoring that equaliser against Norwich was good. But I think it, going out injured and only getting one goal in nine appearances, I think you can't really give him much more than a five. And I think, um, as you said, if you can have a good pre-season, maybe you can get a couple more goals next year. But I think five in such a small sample size is fair. Yeah, he looks like he'd be a real handful, doesn't he, for defenders? Yeah. But it just comes down to fitness and uh, his injuries and things like that. Speaking of injuries, next up is Isaac Hayden. He came in when we knew he had probably a checkered injury past. What did you give him, Dave? I went with a seven. I think he made a massive difference to our team when he came in. You know, straight away, he just looked like a, a proper... You know, we, we'd just gone from Dezel playing most weeks. Then you had someone and he was winning the ball. He was passing the ball with accuracy, you know, really good. And there was a moment at Bristol City when... The game was drifting a bit and nil nil when he put in a massive tackle on the halfway line and he got the crowd up and we scored not long after that. And he, he had them sort of moments in him that he would do something to get the crowd going and to get the team going. So I think he's done he's done really well. Seven might actually be harsh to be honest, but I think he's been really good for us this year. What did you give him, George? No, I've gone eight here. I think that um he added that little bit of Premier League quality when we needed it. And I think um so as you rightfully said, some of the tackles he was putting in were immense. I think that um, it's it's quite sad. I saw on his Instagram, it's kind of a 50-50 sort of thing. He says, see what happens in the future. I'd love to bring him back in, even if it's just on a loan again. But um, no, I think he's been one of our better players in the second half of the season. And I think that um, he's just brought that extra bit of quality to the midfield. And as you said, going from Dezel to... Um, to Hayden or even Duke McKenna at the start of the season from the bench to Hayden from the bench is such a big difference, isn't it? It's just complete. It's like comparing chalk and cheese, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. I went with a seven, the same as Dave, mainly because he probably was an eight when he first came in. But I felt like in the last maybe three, four weeks of the season, you could maybe sense those injury niggles and his fitness in, uh, issues were starting to catch up with him a little bit, and he dropped off probably the high standard he'd set when he first came in but clearly a very classy player. I wouldn't go against having him back here, but as we've discussed previously, previously it needs to be on the club's terms, not his terms. Another loan signing up next is Joe Hodge. George, what did you give him? Well, it's another case. It's a small sample size, isn't it? So I've gone for a five again. I think such a weird loan signing, one of the weirder ones I've seen. I think... When he scored that goal against Blackburn, he looked like the real deal, didn't he? You hear from the Wolves fans about how well he's done and everything. And he just hasn't got it in the side. And I don't know whether that's because, well, no, it is because he's got better players in front of him in defensive midfield. And you're not going to compete with the likes of Chair and Willock in that more attacking role, aren't you? So I think um, he, he certainly looks like a good promising player. And I'm sure he'll pick it up at maybe another championship club or something like that. But I think it just didn't work out for him at QPR. Yeah, I, I went with a five as well. Um, I mean, his stats are actually excellent, which is why I kept him on a five because I nearly put him on a four, but we only actually lost once when he played. Um, but overall, we didn't see enough of him. And um, I think, as we said before, Marty Sifuentes, I don't think he knew really where to use him in the right position. What did you go for, Dave? Yeah, same five for me. You know, started so well at Blackburn and I thought he had done all in his first home game as well. But just, I think... It was quite early on in his time. He played up at Stoke and didn't have a good game. And I don't think Sifuentes trusted him to start after that. He kind of just used him as a sub, really, most of the time. Um, he he did, did OK. I think there's definitely potential. He's, he looks like he's a good prospect. But, you know, I, I doubt we'll see him back here next year on, on loan again. I imagine he'll probably he'll want to be playing regular football next year. I'm not sure I'll get it here. Yeah, he was desperate to get first-team football. Didn't he get he drove down to QPR in the night and it didn't really work out for him. So... I'm sure he'll be keen to play somewhere else next season. So I was Kakai up next, and I went with a three. It was just a bit of a disaster season for him, wasn't it? I mean, we've always said his attitude's 10 out of 10, but it's been clear for a few years he's not really good enough at this level, especially for regular first-team football. You wonder what went on around Christmas time for him to not then even be making the bench the rest of the season. But overall, statistically as well, he's one of the few players who had less than a point a game when he played. He probably has to go now his contract's up. 
and it's a three from me. What did you go for, Dave? Yeah, three as well. Yeah, not great, is it? I mean, he's for me, he's always been an all right backup defender. You know, if you've got injuries, you can bring him in for the odd game. But to go into a season again with him as your first choice right back was absolute lunacy. I don't know what they were thinking. And it was shown up. He just he's not, not good enough at this level. He's you know, he's a trier, he works hard, you know, he's got a great attitude, but positionally he's not good enough. He just he, he allows the winger to get crosses in too easily. He's he's easy to play around when he plays centre half. And, you know, and I think from quite early on, Sifuentes just wasn't having him. I think he made a bad mistake up at Sheffield Wednesday, which cost us, and again at Millwall, he was dreadful at Millwall, and he's quite ruthless like that. So when he weren't having it, and he, he was gone completely from the team, and yeah, I think you're right. He's got to move on in the summer. George Osman Kakai. Well, I've gone a bit generous and said four. I could have easily given him a three, and I don't know why I had it. Well, I haven't, to be honest. Uh, but no, he's just not good enough. And I've seen it. I remember when he got torn apart by Jaden Anthony that season when he was at Bournemouth. And I knew I knew before that, but I knew from then that he's just not good enough. And the fact that he's our role model for who's come through the academy set up is I, I just think it's absolutely incredible. And he's just he's just not good enough. Maybe he'll be a decent League Two, bottom end League One sort of fullback, but I think Fans have known for a while he's just not a good enough right back. And um, you saw it as well. Millwall Way, I think, was the one where Sifuentes looked at it and was like, yeah, this guy should be nowhere near the team. So I think he'll move on. And um, yeah, he's, as Gareth Ainsworth would say, he always emptied the tank, but he's just not good enough. I'm sure he'll, you know, he'll like go on to have a decent career, but he just needs to not be at this level, doesn't it? And then I'm sure he'll be a first team player as well. And that can only be better for his confidence and stuff as well. Charlie Kelman's up next, Dave. Yeah, I've got a four. Um, that's probably generous, to be honest. He's, he's one of them I just don't get. He's got another contract as well. And he, he's been here four years and we, he just never plays, really. I mean, it, it was just weird how he started the season up front at Watford. I mean, we spoke about that game before. It was just insane. What was they doing there? And probably one of the mistakes if Wentz made was starting him against Plymouth in the home game and didn't really work out. He missed a good chance and that was a great chance to win a game that we, that we didn't take. Um, he's gone out on loan again and hasn't really done much, scored a couple of goals. and Yeah, I, I don't get why they keep giving him extensions. Maybe he'll come good eventually. He's still young, but I, I just don't see it with him. George? Well, he was so poor, I forgot to add him to my list. But um, <laughs> off, the mark, I'll go, off the mark, I'll go for a four. Um he just doesn't give you anything, I don't think. And you saw at Watford, he tried to get played in that 10 role in that cam, just behind the striker. Obviously, didn't work out. Went on loan to Wigan. Scored, as you said, scored two, three or got two, three goals. But if you're scoring two, three goals in League One, that says you're nowhere near good enough for the championship. And I think that, no, he's another one. He needs to move on as quick as possible. God knows how he's got another contract. It's a bit like Hamelainen for me. God, like a couple of years ago, how has he got another contract? And I think that um, I said it earlier on on the what's it called in the ratings and also on the review that um, the fact that he was our third choice striker going into a championship season is unreal. So uh, yeah, four is generous. I think I can only presume they're giving him another contract because they've invested money in him in the past and they're just trying to hope that he comes good at some point. I've gone for a three because to me. He can't really say this season he didn't get opportunities because the reason he's on this list is because he did make enough appearances to get included. Obviously, like you said, he started at Watford. He also started against Plymouth. I mean, he just doesn't seem to me to show a specific skill or attribute that you think he's ever going to make it. Um, hopefully he can. Obviously, we all hope he comes back to QPR this season would score 15, 20 goals. But I think we'd all be absolutely astounded if that was to happen. So, yeah, yeah I went with a three. Ryan Coley up next, George. I've gone for a five on this one. It's the same again, small sample size. I think it was a shame for him because he got injured at the wrong time. Obviously, he had that good assist at home against Cardiff. He um he had a couple of moments where he come on under Ainsworth, just run around with it. But I think under Marty, he got put in a bit of a deeper position than a striker and he looked better. He got on the ball some more, to play some good passes. So I think um he's certainly a good one to look out for for the future. But in terms of this season, I can't give him much more than a five. Yeah, I went with a five as well. And it's one of those where he feels probably harsh to rate him because we only really saw him as a sub in a struggling side. But I've not taken any marks off because I always thought he looked at sighting when we saw him. Like you said, it's a shame he got injured. 
for me, he definitely needs a loan next season out in League One, smash it for a season and see what he comes back like for the season after. What did you give him, Dave? Yeah, five as well. S- similar stuff, really. I thought I thought he looked quite good when he, he come in. The, the pity of it was that when I've seen him for the uh, like the under-23 team and that, he's been more of a, a chair-type player, plays like attacking midfield player. He wants to be on the ball. And under Ainsworth, we used him as like a target man. And he wasn't very good at it, to be honest. He, he, he did his best. He worked hard. But that wasn't his game. And when Sir Fuentes come in, he had a few games where he played out wider or in the number 10. He, he looked all right. But like George said, he got that injury probably at the worst time and we haven't seen him since. So I've got high hopes for him. I I agree with you, he probably needs a loan next year, get some regular football. He's still very young, so he could really come on. But, you know, yeah, a five for his first season. Yeah, I think we've all been fair enough with that. Ziad Larkesh next, and I've gone with a five. For me, he's kind of like the left-back version of Osman Kaka. He never to me looks quite good enough as if he's going to be good enough for this level. Um, if he said to me he was going to have to play the next five or ten games at left back, I'd probably be on edge about it. But I'm sure he's learned a lot this season. Whether he's happy being such a bit bop, a bit part player, he only made three starts. That remains to be seen. But he was a five for me. What about you, Dave? Yeah, five as well. He, he was okay. Nothing special really, was he? Um, I should mention that the Stoke home game where we hadn't won at home and he come off the bench and he, he made a real impact. He made the, the third goal and um, which which won us the game. And, you know, that, that was a big moment for him. And he was in use as an impact sub quite a lot, wasn't he? Coming on the left wing a bit. He, he, he's done OK, but yeah, I'll go with five as well. George on Larkesh. Yeah, no, it's another five for me. He hasn't, once again, he hasn't had much of a, as an opportunity. Ainsworth putting him at right back was... Wow, what a decision. Um, but no, I think it'll be I think it'd be nice to see him out on loan somewhere next season. We're forgetting he is still young. He's 20, 21, I think he is. So um no, it'll be nice to see him out on loan, maybe go out to a League One side, something like that, and um prove himself because he hasn't really had that chance. Obviously, he came on against Stoke and against a couple of other teams and showed some desire to win the ball and everything. So um now hopefully he, he can come good. I think Comparing him to Osman Kakai is a bit of an insult to him. But um, <laughs> no, but I think, yeah, he could be one for the future as well. So let's just wait and see. Yeah, do you know, I probably am being harsh. And he probably is a better player than Kakai. It's just the fact, like you say, if he had to play a few games, I wouldn't be as uh, confident as if Kenneth Powell was in there. And that's who we're on to next, day. Kenneth Powell, what have you given him? I caught him with a seven. I think he was probably an eight for the first half of the season, but he's dipped a bit in the second half. Um you know, he he was our top goal scorer for quite a while, wasn't he? He was scored quite a few at the start of the season. And that goal against Huddersfield, you know, that was a big moment for us. And, you know, has probably kept us over the line a little bit. Um, you know, yeah, he, he's, he's done OK. He's probably been one of our better players this year. But I say he's, he struggled a little bit the last few months. I don't know if it's fatigue or people trying to, you know, sussing him out and trying to play over the top of him a little bit which he struggled with, but I'll go with a seven over the whole season. George? Yeah, no, I've gone for a seven as well, but it's it's a borderline six for me. <laughs> I'm not Kenneth, Kenneth Powell's big, biggest fan, but I think he's got good positioning. He's got good defensive awareness. I think once he's tailed off, tailed off near the end of the season, I think some teams have started to figure him out a little bit. But... um. No, for where we were this season, he's definitely a solid left back in this um, in the championship, and I wouldn't be against him coming in as our starting left back again next year. But um, no, he certainly don't set the world alight, but he's solid. Yeah, do you know I nearly gave him a six as well, but I gave him a seven, similar to Dave, because he's always available. So you've got to give him some credit for that. Kind of reminds me when we had Jake Bidwell. He's like reliable, but nothing spectacular. And his set pieces have driven us mad all season long. And for a left back, when he gets forward, he doesn't really get many assists either. So, I mean, that could be the forwards who are to blame. But overall, yeah, I went with a seven uh, for him. Paul Smith, George? I've gone for a six on this one. And I think it's mainly because he's better from the bench than he is starting, in my opinion. He's such an impact player. When he starts, he kind of gets lost. But when he comes on for the last 10, 20 minutes, um, he does well. He has the energy to the game. He has some pace, which we don't really have anywhere else. Um, no, he surprised me because at the start of the season, when he came in, I thought, oh, he's, he's been playing in League 2 the last few years. Is it a backward step? 
But especially in the, in his first few games, he he surprised me. I think what he was one of the shining lights from um well one of the few shining lights from Watford away at the start of the season. I thought he did all right in that game. So um no, I think he's definitely a good op good bench option for next year, but certainly not a starter. Yeah, I went with a six as well. He was nearly a seven if he could finish. Um, but overall, it was just an up and down season for us. I mean, how many preview shows, Dave, did we spend saying he should start? And then he would start, but he'd be poor from the start and he'd be back on the bench, but then he'd be excellent off the bench again. And he's a threat, there's no doubt about it, but he needs to add consistency and finishing for me. So I gave him a six. What did you give him, Dave? Yeah, six as well. It's, it's composure for me. He's so erratic in the in the final third. He'll he'll beat his full back and get in, and then it, the cross will just go off and throw it. And you think, oh, for God's sake, just get one in, and then he'll he'll put then he'll suddenly put in a really good cross. Um, he's got to be better of his finishing. He he scored I think three goals this year. He should have at least doubled that. He's missed so many chances. Southampton away, he should have had that trick and just kept missing them. Um, he's so frustrated, especially at Plymouth as well. God, the chances he missed that night. But he's done pretty well. He's a good squad player to have, really. I, again, not like you two have said, I'd have him off the bench a lot next season. I think he, he offers us some quality, and yeah, I'll go with six. Yeah. Speaking of six, last player up, it's Chris Willock, and I've gone with a six. And this was, to me, the hardest one to rate, but I'd just given Paul Smith a six, and I thought, over the course of the season, and you're trying to remember all 46 games, Willock, for me, was a six because one week he looked top quality, but the amount of weeks early in the season when he didn't look interested, and I know he was being misused by the manager, but he didn't look convincing really to me at times as a right winger either. I know he ended the season well, probably an eight out of ten most weeks there, but we have to, like I say, remember his efforts in the first third of the campaign and some other matches too. And his four goals and four assists enough as well? Probably not. What did you go for, Dave? Yeah, I'll go with a six, borderline seven, I think. Like you say, not great at the start of the season, just didn't look like he wanted to be here. And I don't really blame him for that. I don't think he obviously didn't get on with Ainsworth. And just that opening game, I thought just an insult, bringing him on in the 97th minute, I was saying, when you're 4-0 down, it's like, come on, what are you expecting him to do here? But um, he got a lot better under Sifuentes. He, for me, he's not a right winger, but he's played that role all season. He's done reasonably well at it. He looks better through the middle to me, but We've had other options in there and he's kind of fitted in the team for us. You know, he's played a big part in us staying up, let's be honest. That winner against Rotherham was massive. We got some goals earlier on in the season when Sifuentes first got his first couple of wins. I think he's done, done pretty well, but um, I'll go with a six overall. It'd be a, be a shame to see him go, I think, in the summer. Yeah, definitely. I still hope he stays. George? No, this, is, this, is, this was a really tough one, but I've gone for a seven. Once again, my generosity... Is um is paying out, but no, you've seen glimpses on it of his former self, but I think to compare him to what we saw under Mick Beal would be foolish. Um, but no, he's he's had some good moments, some good moments of creativity. His assists have been um good in good moments, but I think that um the way he was treated at the start of the season, you could say, oh, it's down to the player, down to the player. How how would any player feel if you're getting um? treated like that with the game time and everything. Fans are screaming for him to come on the pitch. And I don't care about his injury past the season before. He should not be getting two, three minutes at the end of the game, especially when Stephen Duke McKenna's on the pitch. So I think um, start of the season necessarily isn't down to him. So I think um, I think a seven out of 10 for Chris Willock this year. But I think near the end, m more of an eight, but near the start, it weren't his fault. That, yeah, so that's, yeah, That's totally fair. The manager ratings, only two this season, thankfully. I had three last year to rate, but only two this season. Gareth Ainsworth first, Dave, should be interesting. Well, I'll go a very generous two. Um, yeah, not great, was it? I mean, we've spoke before about him. It's He should have gone last summer. You know, I mean, you lose, was it 5-0 five, five at Oxford in pre-season? Then you lose your first game 4-0 and... You know, I remember speaking to a few people who went to a, a fans event the week before the Watford game and he was going, oh, you know, one team always gets hammered the first game of the season. Let's hope it's not us. It wasn't the best thing to be going in with. You know, you should be looking to win your first game, not lose only by a couple of goals. Um, just didn't work out. The style of play was atrocious, you know, just lumping long balls up all the time. It was just, there was no pattern to how we were ever going to score a goal. And we just, we were so open at the back. We were conceding so many chances. So, yeah, 
dreadful, really. I'll give him a two, mainly because he signed Steve Cook. But um, apart from that, it was poor. George? Well, no, it's taken me a lot here not to give him a one. So um, I have gone for a two out of pure respect and the fact that he actually did try. Um, the Steve Cook thing, I actually did speak to Steve Cook about it. And um, he said he instigated the move himself. He had nothing to do with Ainsworth. So this was actually off camera. So, um, yeah, so, so I don't think he's got anything to do with that. But the football was just dire, wasn't it? Like, yeah, players were expected to run through walls for you and everything, but... Come on. Like, it's, it was just so poor. We were so open at the back, as Dave said. Just an embarrassing spell for the club, to be honest. I was ashamed to be going to the game and watching that team. And it's just... No, it was one of the worst moments for me as a as a QPR fan. Eight points in his reign. I think, yeah, it's just an embarrassing moment. But he, he tried and there's not really much more I can say, to be honest. It weren't successful at all. So, um. Yeah. Yeah, I went with a two as well, full house. It was a disastrous rain. We don't need to say much more. He sapped the life out of the club, really, didn't he? And we've been very lucky not to pay the price. Like you both just said there, was not enjoyable going to watch QPR, almost making us depressed, wasn't it? And uh, two, three, four games, he was here too long in the end, wasn't he? And uh, as we said quite a lot in the preview shows, we would have been Rotherham if he had stayed here. Luckily, we hired a genius to save us this season. So, George, what rating are you giving Marty Sifuentes? Well, generosity, I've gone for a 10 here. Complete opposite end of the spectrum. But, yeah, like, you could say that's generous, but you look at it and think, what more? What much more could he, could he have done? Like, he's played players in the right position. He's set us up perfectly for every game, in my opinion. You know, only you could argue one or two that we haven't done too well, and that's maybe Holloway and a game like that. But... Apart from that, he's just been a tactical genius on and off the pitch. Like from the couple of times I've spoken to him, he's he's really connected with the fans as well, I think. And um yeah, just a great hopeful start to his reign as QPR manager. Hopefully he'll be here for many years to come. And um for me personally, I love playing passing seeing passing football, I love seeing pressing football. And watching Ainsworth just made me want to gouge my eyes out. But watching uh, <laughs> Sifuentes, I'd, I'd, I'll watch back all the games. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy he came in. He's the right man for the job. And um, 10 out of 10 for me. I think that sums up the difference between the two managers there, George. Uh, yeah. Dave, what did you go for for Sifuentes? Same. 10 out of 10 for me. Absolutely phenomenal job. One of the, I said before, one of the best jobs I've seen from a QPR manager going back all my time watching them, you know, to come into that team, eight points on the board, absolutely dr lucky to have that many points, to be honest, a dreadful team, dreadful squad, and to the form they've shown since then to, you know, playoff form, really, to, to get out of it. it it's, it's been unbelievable, you know. The way he has them set up, you know, Leicester away from me was the one where you see how what a good coach he is. They, they blocked off all passing lanes all day for Leicester. They were so well organised and just kept catching them on the break. It was just so good to watch. And you see the team that's, that's finished the season, they were most of them were here at the start. It's not as though he's brought in a load of new players and revolutionised it. You know, it, it's a phenomenal job. And, you know, just being so pragmatic with his style of play as well. I can't speak highly enough of him. I think if he stays here a few years, he'll go down as one of our best ever. I think, I think he's a phenomenal manager. Yeah, it has to be a 10 out of 10. And it's like George said, he's galvanised the team on the pitch. He's galvanised the club off the pitch. We love a stat. Every single stat has improved. How he's done it from where we were. You have to remember eight <coughs> points from 14 games and we needed 50 to survive. It's remarkable. And you could be uber critical and say, like, we let ourselves down in a few games and we had the spell around Christmas where we didn't win. And obviously it felt like for a while we were never going to beat a team around us. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because he was learning. He had one job to keep us up if he could, and he's managed to do it. He's been an absolute revelation. I, I can't remember a manager, even Neil Warnock, who had the full support of the fan base like Marty Sifuentes does. Even Warnock had his critics. When we were winning the league, people would be moaning about, oh, we're sometimes too negative and stuff. But Marty Sifuentes, if you can find a QPR fan who does not absolutely love the guy... I'd love to know who that QPR fan is. It's been remarkable and it's just so nice to end the season on such a positive high. And like we've said a few times, you can't believe it is the same season that we're summing up there between those two managers and the team we were watching eight, nine months ago. 
to what we've watched at the end of the season. Marty Sifuen says, we just have to thank you, I guess, if you happen to be seeing this. <laughs> and that's it for us. Let us know your ratings. Don't take what we've said too seriously. It's all just fun. And regardless of what ratings, we, ratings we've given, the main thing is the future looks bright for Queen's Park Rangers. We're all off for a well-deserved lie down. We'll see you soon, though. And come on, you ours. We know who we are. You know who we are. We are QPR.